Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to be moving elements by drag and drop. You know when you move an element across and you let it go and the element stays right there? That's what we're going to go through. And this is actually not that easy. I, again, at least for me. So let's just set it up. Input type equals button, ID equals drag, class equals draggable, value draggable equals true, okay? And then we're gonna have an area, a drop zone ID equals drop zone, and in, in the center is going to be called drop zone. And for the CSS, I'm going to push the drop zone. It's a div, right? I'm going to push it away a little bit and down, so I have area, to, a room to actually drag. And I'm going to make it 300 pixels by 300 pixels. I'm going to give it a border so we know exactly where to actually drop it into that area itself. All right, so, but again, I shouldn't drop it in and have this do something. It'll just get the element and drop it, and I can move it around inside of there. Let's watch the functionality. So I drop it, and then I can actually move it around here in different locations, right? I drag, and where I, I let it go, it actually stays. That's what I want to do. So let's go to the code itself. Okay, of course, the um, we instantiate these elements themselves, drag on drag start dot listen mouse event E, nothing new, right? This one, start position, E dot target as an element, get bounding client. You write as an element just because this whole thing is not an element, just this part is the element itself. Again, remember we could have done E dot target element equals E, um, element position equals E dot target, and then position, start position, equals position dot get bounding. Okay, we could have done that too. But this right here, get bounding client rect. Basically what this says is that for your element, get the bounds of it, know where your boundaries are because it's different, right? So if you have a big, huge button, a big image or something, you need to get the, the boundaries um, of this particular structure itself. And why do we actually do that? Well, if we grab a button here as opposed to up here. That's different, right? Because the pixels are different. So if I didn't actually do that, and if I dragged it and I dropped it, if it always, which it is, the, the, the basis, the um, standard is to go by the left upper corner. That's where we start. So if I dragged it from down here and I dropped it, all of a sudden this section would be moving in that direction here. So in other words, I would drag this part down here, all the, the entire thing would shift down so that this part is the center of where I dropped it, right? So it would always be a little bit jerky at the very end. I put here, I just wanna drag it and drop it and it drops exactly where I let it go. Because again, where I am grabbing it, that is the center. Where I am grabbing it, that is the center, as opposed to always having the center right on the up, left upper quad upper corner, which is standard. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to say X position. The X position is the position going this direction horizontally. Okay. So it starts with zero pixels and goes all the way out. Here's a hundred pixels, 200 pixels, three pixels, and so on. The Y position goes from zero on down, zero pixels, hundred pixels, 200 pixels, 300 pixels, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to say the X position equals E dot client dot X. So basically where you, the, the mouse event, where you click itself and where are you on the X line from here on. So if I click here is different from click here. Notice the Y is different also. So if I click here is different from here, but the Y, if I click here, to here, it's the same level. It's not up and down different. So the Y would be the same position. Okay, so we need to get both positions. So what does this mean? Basically, what I'm saying is that always keep wherever I click, know where I click. So the e.client.x is where I clicked. I click here, e.client.x um, and e.client.y. But it's gonna say right here, subtract out the, the change from this point to this point so that I'll always know where this point actually is. All right, so when I drag it around, it'll pretend like this point is this point. 
same purpose itself. Okay, make the transition nice and smooth. All right, I hope that's clear. It's a little bit confusing, but when you think about it, it kind of makes a little bit of sense to prevent that jerky motion itself. Now we have the next e dot data transfer x. This is text, writes a string, and the x position and the y position itself, and we're going to need that. Drop dot drag over prevent default. We just need to do this so that we can actually perform a drop. Remember, drop again the drop zone right here. Stop propagation. String x position. Okay. Remember lexical scope. This is a different variable from this one, so we have to re-declare um, it and re-instantiate it. But I'm going to give it the same value. E dot data transfer dot get data x. So this exposition is going to have the same value as this exposition, right? Because I'm going to ask for x, which is this variable, which is the same thing as this variable. Nice and easy to remember, right? Same thing with the y. We'll do the same thing here. But the this is a string, right? We, we already know that. This is a string, so we'll have to convert it. Int.parse, int.parse, into actual numbers. Drag, drop dot append drag. What does that actually mean? Think of these as elements. I'm grabbing one element and attaching it, appending it, attaching it on to the other element, right? But that's not how we do things in programming, right? We, we do the method onto the object, right? So onto the object of drop zone, we're going to attach drag. Why do we have to put that inside of there? Well, because when you actually grab it and you drop it inside here, now we're just talking about this particular div element. This kind of, it doesn't go away, but you have to attach it onto there so that it is still accessible itself. If we got rid of it, we drag it and we drop it onto there and we can't gr grab it again because it's not appended on there. It's still somewhere outside of the drop zone itself. So we have to do that. And then we're going to say, where do we put this, though? Drag style.position is absolute. Then I'm going to say the left position, so going from here to here, is going to be e.offset minus x. OK, x is right here. So x is the position of where I grabbed it, right? e.offset.x is where we are within the box of the this particular div element the drop zone itself. And the y is the same thing. Now, this is a problem with drag and drop. You can't just grab an element and move it anywhere on the page. You have to be able to move it within a drop zone. I believe this is true. I've not found any evidence that you could do it otherwise, somewhere else outside. Why is that? Probably because to track an element in just the normal browser, there's no good way of doing it. I don't know why there's no good way. There just isn't. So there's not a really good way of doing it. But tracking the coordinates, so the x position and the y position in a, which it seems ironic. I I, I would think you would be able to, to track it on the outside the in the browser itself. But inside of an element, you could do it much more easily. And, and it's e dot offset dot x, e dot offset dot y, and that's why we actually need a drop zone in order to move things around. Okay. And you would subtract the beginning position in and of itself. So in other words, I can drag it here. Same thing. I'm sorry I'm, I'm being redundant. I could drag it here, and it'll just stay where it is. It doesn't jerk to the original left upper corner position. And, so, and, and that's basically how you do it. Okay? But now wait a minute. A couple of other things. What if I don't want to start on the outside? I just want to start on the inside to begin with. Right? I don't want to have to drag it on top of there. Well, I'm going to have to go to here. I'll copy this, paste it there. We can remove the drop zone then, because it's not going to be a drop zone really any longer, right? But at the same time, because we're not getting an outside element and dropping it into this element, we can remove this, right? What happens if we don't remove it? Not a real big deal. You could still actually do it, but we don't need it either.
so you could still move it around and it starts in the beginning you can't drag it outside but you could drag it anywhere you want to okay now this is another thing now how do we actually get multiple elements it gets a little trickier right remember we talked about simple things not a real big deal doing one element but we want multiple elements these things don't scale very easily so what I'm gonna say is in here I'm gonna make it a text element let's just say input type equals text ID equals just text we have to make the class the same right class equals draggable draggable equals true there we go so I can drag that around but it doesn't do anything right up here because I expanded it hey I know how to make this expandable query select selector all and that should help it right not quite because if you do this watch this it makes the original go away because we're not exactly sure through this system which element we're actually moving around am I dragging this one well the computer is saying no we're talking about just this one the drag actually goes away because it's not sure which one you're actually clicking on right because there's no when you think about it e dot target going on let's fix that then so let's say string um, let's call it ID equals e dot target dot ID so we'll get that information itself that's not used okay and then we'll have to send that data transfer set data I'll call it like ID and we'll go we'll send that there okay in the drop zone okay cuz again lexical scope we'll need to get this information over here we still don't need drop dot append but what we will say is um, string let's call it ID equals e dot data transfer dot get data type ID so that's going to be the ID and we'll say let's just do that in the beginning um, element drag target equals query selector ID and I'm gonna say drag target drag target okay so what I'm actually doing here is by saying that's perfectly okay we, we, we ran into this this um, particular warning before right um, so string ID let's actually get the ID so when I click on one element or the other let's actually get the ID of this okay and I'm gonna send it down to the drop zone the drop method I'm gonna say what is this ID again on the thing I'm clicking so this mouse event E is not the same right this mouse event E is actually on this div because it's a on drop so what we want is the E the event for the dragging in and of itself so on drag start that this E is different from this E right I don't want this E I want this E up here that E right there so I'm gonna get that information send it on down get the ID so that that information from the E dot target from the drag start and then I'm going to basically get query selector and say basically say hey this I use a pound sign right because that's um, um, string interpolation I think it was it's basically getting the value of it 
and uh, of the ID. And so I'm going to get the query selector. And so this drag target is not going to represent it. What, what it will represent is the thing which I clicked on. See, the drag tar drag here is going to be in both elements because it's a list. Drag target is going to be the one that I'm actually clicking and dragging. All right. And then the one that I'm actually clicking on and dragging is going to be the one that has the style and the position itself. So let's try that. Let's see if this works. Cross fingers. I left click, I drag, and let go. Okay, okay, works, works. How about this one? Okay, that works too. So that's how we can actually do this to identify which we, one we want to drag, but we can just do this again, not outside that zone, only inside the zone, but eh, that's pretty good though, right? Okay, so um, I hope this was helpful. Let's keep moving on. All right, thank you.